Hello and welcome back to Simply Greg's Theory V. You join us tonight in my garage at home where in the next few weeks there's going to be some major EV charging upgrades happening and I want to take you through what the plan is but also I want to take you through some of the mistakes I first made when we got our first EV. It's been two years already so I'll show you what the upgrades are going to be at home and I'll also we'll also go through some of the mistakes that I made. So let's get into this. This is our Mini Cooper. We're actually celebrating two years with it since we got our first EV. It's been absolutely fantastic. And this is my garage. It's not very fancy. It's a work in progress. It's one of those things that has been on the back burner for a while. But this is my EV charging setup at home or my electric vehicle service equipment. And everyone calls these chargers, but I wanted to get it right for the nerds out there. I call it a charger. So two years ago, I put this setup in. I bought a, a Grizzly Avalanche Edition. It's a dumb charger, no smart features on it whatsoever. And I installed it on a 50 amp breaker in my panel here. There's plenty of room in my panel. So it's at 40 amps. The dip switch is set at 40 amps, so I can do 9.6 kilowatts. And it's been relatively good for the last two years. However, now with two EVs, it's kind of getting annoying at home having one EV charger. And I also never liked that it was plugged in. It's plugged into a, a NEMA 1450, the Hubble NEMA 1450. And I never liked this setup, to be honest with you. I didn't do a lot of research at first. We installed it. It cost a bit more than it should have. I think this was around $450 at the time. And the Hubble plug was another 150 or 160. So quite expensive going hardwiring. So that's one of the mistakes that I made is that I didn't go hardwired from the start and I would have saved some money there or it would have cost about the same, but hardwire would have been a better choice. Secondly, the Grizzly itself, I've had an issue with the charging cable where the, where the release button on the cable itself doesn't work too great and they haven't been too good with the warranty on it so yeah cool cool unit cool company but some of the um, warranty issues aren't the greatest to handle and we even got our ev charging sign here that uh, i bought so what's the plan well what we're going to do is we're going to rip all of this out well not the panel we're going to rip all of this out and we're going to install two Tesla universal wall connectors. Uh, this is really, really overkill, but also very expensive at the same time. I mean, the two wall connectors with the red faceplate here, I'm gonna put a red faceplate on it for outside. I'll show you that in a minute, why we chose the red one. This is about $2,000 of uh, EV charging equipment here before any installation. But what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking out the 50 amp breaker, replacing it with a 60 amp breaker. And we're going to be installing the two Tesla universal wall connectors. One will go inside, one will go outside. We've already pulled this one out of the box. The reason why I went with the wall connectors really has to do with the fact is these could share power individually. So you could have a full 11 kilowatts going to one or you can split these um, at 24 amps a piece or depending on what your EV charging load is. And now having two EVs here, sometimes we find ourselves in the situation where the two cars will have to be charged at the same time. And also the Fiat pulls 11 kilowatts. So I wanted to upgrade to have full charging capability on the uh, Fiat. And with everything going NACS or J3400 these days, I think this is a good option. This is the easiest power sharing option around. We're future proofed on this side and you also have your J1772 connector. So while two Tesla universal wall connectors might seem a bit overkill and uh, pricey, we're also getting to a point now where we find ourselves sometimes having to charge both cars at once. So we'll be able to power share 48 amps. So both cars will get 24 amps each if they're both plugged in at the same time. So about 5.7 kilowatts 
which is more than enough for daily driving, especially on REVs with small batteries. The Mini is uh, 28 kilowatts usable, and the Fiat's about 37, 38 kilowatts usable. So they'll charge up reasonably quick. The other thing too is that right now, having the equipment inside the garage on the wall, you're always forced to back up one car almost completely against the garage door. And I'll explain that in a moment why I don't like doing that and what happened here to one of our neighbors. But I think the application for the wall connectors here is exactly what it was meant for, where you can daisy chain, I believe up to six or eight of these, all sharing a, a via same circuit. We'll get the full 60 amps. We'll have 48 amps usable. So I think this is gonna be a really, really solid setup. And as I said, I liked the um, red Tesla faceplate. This will match the uh, brick outside. I'll show you that in a moment as well. I'm not gonna take you through all this, the uh, wall connectors and stuff or the unboxing. Uh, we don't need to uh, do that, but everything is super high quality on here. This is typical Tesla stuff. Very, very high quality stuff on here. Expensive, but totally worth at the same time for this level of, um, of quality. This is all going to get installed in the next few weeks. My electrician Kirk is on vacation now. He'll be back. We'll do another video on the installation side. I'll make sure to, to take that day off from work to uh, film. But let's go outside and I'll show you what the plan is. Obviously, as we're filming, it's uh, raining. The weather conditions here have been changing constantly. So one of the chargers or electric vehicle service equipment will go here. Somewhere here, I'm thinking. I don't know if we could go this close to the exterior plug, but it will go here. It will match the uh, brick somewhat nicely. If not, maybe we'll put it here or something. But why I'm putting it here outside is that right now, let's say we had the Fiat wanting to charge. We'd have to back it up right against the garage door. And we live in townhouses here, as you can see. And what happens is the snow comes off the roof here, up here. The snow comes off the roof on sunny days because we face our houses in the sun all day long. And the snow will actually melt off the roof and hit the car on top. And my neighbor's Tesla in the houses in back of us, he actually had his roof, his glass roof get shattered on, on his Tesla when the snow came off. As you can see the neighbor's houses across the street, they all have snow. So the snow will slide off and hit the car. So now we'll be able to, let's just pretend this is the charger here and you have your cable. So what we'll be able to do is leave the car parked there and just roll out the cable and plug it in. Fiat will do full 11 kilowatts, which is actually really cool. And again, this is for future proofing as well. We'll just get back in the garage here, but we'll be future proofed at a 60 amp circuit. We'll be future proofed with NACS and um, the J1772. So I think that pretty much sums it up. I just want to do a, a quick weekly update of um, what's going on here in terms of EV charging. This will all get installed in, in the next few weeks. And if you made it this far, please like and subscribe and hopefully you don't make some of the mistakes, the same mistakes that I did with um, having it plugged in, not choosing the, maybe the correct equipment at uh, first. So we'll, we'll get that all sorted out. We'll also be able to claim the six or $700 rebate from Quebec at the same time. Uh, that will help lower some of the costs, uh, but that's pretty much it. Uh, once, once the install is scheduled, I'll be sure to film it all for you, what we're doing here. And uh, we'll see you in the next film. So bye for now.